Insightful Podcasts by Informative Hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 30 special event d23 expo i'm your host joseph whalen and my disneyaholic co-host michelle whalen hello everyone how are you doing today dear i am doing wonderful how are you i am fantastic so yes we recorded episode 29 yesterday uh while d23 no saturday we saturday recorded it. Mm-hmm. while d23 was still going on yep uh, there was a ton of information that came out then, but we figured there was yeah. going to be a lot more coming out. Right, right. So we would hold off. We would do a special edition podcast to capture as much as we could. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think we have most of the important highlights here. Yeah. <clears throat> basically, there was something that came out every day from, you know, every aspect uh, of of uh disney you know be it the movies television the parks the resorts uh you know it it was kind of everything so you know obviously if we really wanted to do it justice we would probably spend a whole weekend sure just going through you know everything um but i think i i kind of captured you know some of the top things that people were kind of looking forward to and and some things that people didn't even know were going to be changing that that come as kind of a, a surprise uh, so we had four, treat. four big things that we we're going to talk mm-hmm. about and there's a ton of detail about each of these uh the first being the new avengers campus we'll get into get into details about that then there's the transformation of epcot forthcoming Then we'll talk about the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser Halcyon. And then uh, new things that we've learned about Disney+. And we have links to details on all these. So Mm -hmm. if we don't cover every aspect of it or every detail, you're welcome to go take a look at the links themselves and get further information. Absolutely. So with that said, are we ready to get started? Let's do it. So Avengers Assemble. Tell us about this. <laughs> uh, so for a while, everyone knew that there was going to be some sort of Avengers land or Marvel land or, or something. They just didn't know exactly what it was going to be. And obviously, they finally uh, announced it that the Marvel section, uh, which will be at California Adventure to start, um, would be called the Adventure, the Avengers Campus. Um, And the idea behind it is that um, the Avengers have set up places all around the world to recruit people um, to be able to join their ranks. Um, So, you know, you go to the theme park, you go to this area, and you can see if you can become an Avenger. Um, The theming will tie together with other Disney theme parks all over the world that already have Marvel rides like Paris and Hong Kong. Um, so, uh, in California Adventure, it looks like it's going to be starting around, um, 2020, and the campus is going to be set up to recruit, again, the next generation of superheroes. So, just to clarify, though, when, <clears throat> when this was first talked about and first announced in the news, uh, <clears throat> it was rumored to be appearing at Disneyland. hmm Well, and, and it is still going to be at Disneyland be- but the way that they they show it, there's actually um, one of the links that that came up. Uh, I don't know if we have it, um, but we'll definitely post a, a link to it. It actually had a map of the campuses. So they had Stark Expo in Hong Kong. Then they had Avengers Campus in yep, that was it uh, in Paris. Um, Avengers Campus in California, and then there would be an outpost in. 
Florida. So I think what it is is even though there might not be a full campus in Orlando, there's going to be some sort of outpost. And obviously that's probably going to be linked where the Guardians of the Galaxy ride will be in Epcot that they're okay. So they're they're you know so there might not be a full campus like I said, but they are going to have you know different areas and, and different little things kind of kind of linked up. But just to clarify, this is a Cal. The whole campus itself is in California Adventure, not Disneyland. Right, correct. It is going to be in California Adventure. Okay, cool. Um, so basically, the idea is that you you get to the campus and there will be the Worldwide Engineering Brigade, known as Web, and that's going to house the new Spider-Man experience, um, which is Disney's first ride-through attraction to feature Spider-Man. Um, so during the open house, aspiring inventors are going to be um, invited to test drive their latest in, uh, latest invention, the Web Slinger vehicle, which will allow you to sling webs just like Spider-Man. Uh, the attraction will give you a taste of what it's like to have actual superpowers uh, as you help Spider-Man collect spider bots that have run amok. Uh, also, the campus is going to have the Prim... Uh, Pim. Test kitchen, Pim uh, Test Kitchen, and just like Ant Man and the Wasp, uh, use the Pim particles to grow and shrink. Uh, Pim Technologies are using the latest invention to grow and shrink fruit food at this eatery. So that's probably going to be like a snack uh, area within it. So it's like gourmet tiny food. <laughs> gourmet tiny food, and obviously there's going to be different encounters uh, with other superheroes like Black Widow, Ant Man, and Wasp, Doctor. Doctor Strange, Guardians of the Galaxy, um, and superheroes from Wakanda and Asgard, as well as Iron Man. Um, so the building is actually going to be part of Phase 2, um, and they will also be opening another brand new e-ticket attraction where you will step aboard a Quinjet and fly alongside the Avengers in an epic adventure to Wakanda and beyond. Um, so... Sounds really cool if you're going to be in California. But like I said, I think they're, they are going to try and link some of the things together if you're not in, you know, they're going to have the, the, the different outposts in the other parks that are all going to kind of, you know, link together. Okay. So it sounds really cool. Sounds, you know, very, you know, uh, next step, you know, and, and some of these newer rides, you know, using the, the newer technology. So. so are we going to get the kind of ride technology that we've seen in, like, Hong Kong Disney? We might. Because they've know. got some of the coolest rides yes, out there. Yes, they do. They do. And we'll eventually get them here at some point. So yay for Adventure Campus. So yes. Disney can't score a licensing deal with Sony for Spider-Man movies, but they're going to use them throughout the park. Use them through, the, through the park. Yeah, I does, thought that was kind of interesting. I'm curious if this is going to have any effect on the Spider-Man ride at Universal at this point. Yeah, I'm sure at some point, you know, it'll just kind of overpower, you know, everything, you know, at all the other parks right. that he's used at. So, okay, well, very cool. A lot mm -hmm. to look forward to. It's very ambitious to to want to tout that out in 2020, considering mm -hmm. how long it took them to do yeah, you know, Star, Star Wars, Wars Land. Land. Yeah. So we'll see. But mm -hmm. uh, what else has got we got going? We were transforming Epcot. Tell us about that. Yeah, one. this was this was really big. They, uh, you know, a lot of stuff was kind of coming out throughout the weekend. You know, a little bit here, a little bit there, and it wasn't until Sunday that they actually released the full transformation really of of epcot um and it's kind of historic because they're really almost redoing the entire park so you know if you know anything about epcot epcot stands for experimental prototype community of tomorrow originally it was really supposed to be that it was supposed to be a community it was never supposed to be 
a theme park. It was never supposed to be anything like that. It was really supposed to be a town and a whole, um, you know, city system and whatnot. And obviously, once Walt had passed away, they had all these ideas, and they kind of came together. <laughs> once Walt passed, passed away, they realized they weren't going to make any money on his ideas. So. so let's kind of, you know, so then they kind of came up with the idea of these two different lands. You had... Um, you know, a world showcase to be able to have, you know, various different countries. And then, you know, you had the, this area to be able to, you know, showcase, you know, futuristic type things. And the idea, you know, like dinosaurs. <laughs> right? Well, the idea was that Epcot was never supposed to be complete. It was always supposed to be evolving. None of the Disney parts are complete. Every time we go, they're doing construction. <laughs> That's true. Um, but but that was actually, you know, and Walt Disney, in his idea of what Epcot was, it was always supposed to be in a state of becoming, is what he was quoted to say. Um, that it was a place that was going to change, you know, all the time. Whereas really, until recently, Disney Parks honestly didn't really change very much until they started getting real competition from well and universal that's what i was just others. gonna say is that until competition came in with universal a lot of the rides never got updated you know you'd have a refurbishment but you never had anything that really got updated you never really had anything new it was tried and true and and you know that's what it was but then again like you said because of universal that put the pressure on them to need to update and you know get new people to come and and whatnot and honestly epcot for the longest time world showcase you know was fine the way it was but future world really was lacking you had you know interventions you know uh east and west side that at the time you know when things opened you know i remember they had a video phone where you could you know make a phone call and and you know call a family member and now you know, everybody's got skype on their now facetime on their phone so. <laughs> right exactly so so much of what was top-notch 25 40 years ago became outdated and they they couldn't update the stuff i think fast enough so you started seeing different um things well, that, was that like were the in. one time we were there we went to the the home of tomorrow right and they showed you all these things and one thing that they showed you was this digital guitar right and and i wanted to go buy that digital guitar for our son right and it was like six years old. Right. So at it was that like point. it wasn't even brand new. And, right. You know, right. I and that was the it. thing was that I think in the beginning, because I remember, you know, IBM had a big, you know, a big display. And then over time, you know, everything that was there became obsolete. And I don't know if it was just the fact that technology was changing so quickly that they just couldn't keep up with the displays or you know, the partners that they were partnering with just decided after, you know, so many years to, to pull out, right. uh, you know, I don't know what it was, but you got to the point where, you know, one of the last times that, that we went, like the one side of Innoventions was completely shut down. They did, had nothing in it. Yep. And then the other one, when you walked through, it was almost like a ghost town. So you knew they needed to... They had air conditioning. They, that was the important yes, thing. Yes. And that was the best place <laughs> ever. Um, so now they are... You know, totally redoing um, this. And basically, what they're doing is they're now, instead of having the two sections, they're breaking it up into four different, what they're quote unquote neighborhoods is what they're calling it. So, World Showcase, which was the area where all of the countries are, is going to continue to be the celebration of culture and cuisine and architecture and traditions infused with some magic. Um, so some of the little updates with World Showcase is that the United Kingdom Pavilion will be welcoming its first attraction inspired by Mary Poppins. You'll be able to step in time down Cherry Tree Lane um, past Admiral Boom's house and enter number 17, the home of the Banks family, where your adventure will begin. Really nothing else has come out as to what the ride will be, but again, this is the first time for an attraction in the UK Pavilion. Um, obviously, most people know that the nighttime show Illuminations um, will be ending, and they're putting in a, a short-term 
uh, limited run uh, nighttime show called Epcot Forever. But in 2020, the new show, Harmonious Us, will debut as the park's nighttime, the largest nighttime spectacular ever created for a Disney park. It'll celebrate how the music of Disney inspires people all over the world, carrying away, uh, carrying you away harmoniously on a stream of familiar Disney tunes, um, reinterpreted by a diverse group of artists from around the globe. It'll feature float pieces, custom built LED panels, choreography, uh, moving fountains, lights, pyrotechnics, lasers, and more. So that a lot of people are, are very excited um, to see. Also, summer of 2020, the France Pavilion will even have more to discover. Obviously, they've been building the Remy's Ratatouille Adventure ride, um, which is, uh, they actually had that ride in, in uh Disneyland Paris, so that's coming here. Um, they're also debuting a few new little restaurants as well. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Also in the France Pavilion, um, the classic movie that they had, The Impressions of France, will be joined by a new Beauty and the Beast sing-along, which will be debuting in January of 2020. And then the um, in Canada, their Circle Vision uh, movie will actually be updated in 2020 as well, as well as uh, in the China Pavilion, their movie is actually going to be updated as well. So anybody that's a fan of the 360 movies, it's nice to see that after so many years that they're finally, you know, upgrading uh, those movies. Right. So that's everything that's going to be changing in World Showcase. So World Celebration is actually going to be the part of the section that was kind of the front part of Epcot, um, of World Showcase, um, not World Showcase, of Future World, where Spaceship Earth is. So Spaceship Earth is actually, you know, still going to be there. They are revamping the ride. It's going to be a, a totally different... Um, the other, there were a couple of different articles that talked about uh, what was discussed. It was basically going to be that you're going to follow a magical story light that'll basically go through a, um, you know, uh, a ride basically through time, but not like a history of communication, which is what uh, Spaceship Earth is now. So totally revamping the story, a whole new narrator. But obviously the same ride technology. Some of the scenes are going to remain and they're going to kind of be plussed um, where new things are going to be uh, coming in. Um, there's actually a new pavilion that they're going to be building. Uh, that'll be where they'll be doing different live events. It's basically going to be the home base for all of their signature fest uh, festivals. So like the food and wine and um, uh, the, the different, you know, uh, ones that they do. Uh, it's basically going to have like kind of like a three tiered level. Um, and the top level, you can actually overlook the the park oh, uh, cool. from it so that sounded you know uh, it'll have like a plaza level an expo level and then a park level that will sit you know uh, on the, the top level um, the whole entrance of the plaza you know anybody that's you know gone online or have you know has visited recently has seen a whole bunch of construction you know going on with the entrance and they're basically transforming that whole thing making it you know like if you've ever gone you know they had the uh the stone the monoliths with the, the monoliths with the pictures <clears throat> are and they, everything are they taking those out those have already been taken out now the pictures they are supposed to be posting putting them someplace else just not on the big monoliths um but basically they're putting in gardens upon gardens and, you know, this lush area, whereas, you know, if you ever walked through it before, it was very stone and yeah, kind of cold. cold yeah. um, here, it's going to be lush, green, you know, like if you ever go for the the um, the, the flower uh, festival, yeah, the you know, they, they would put the topiaries out, yeah. and that would really be the only time that it was 
you know, bright colors. Yeah, now you didn't get much greenage there. Right. So now the whole idea is, you know, <clears throat> the walkways and everything will be all lush and green um, and kind of pay homage to the original idea of what Epcot was. So kind of that community garden right, type right. thing. Um, and as you exit Spaceship Earth, you'll discover a breathtaking new view of World Showcase from Dreamer's Point. And this is something that uh, a lot of people are very excited about because they're putting in a statue of Walt Disney uh, there's kind of like steps and he's kind of like sitting on the steps kind of just looking so you know that's going to be a place that everybody's going to be going to, now, to take this, pictures is this the because you said they're replacing the fountain with this right the one well the fountain when you not the big giant fountain Right. The big giant fountain, as far as I know, is still staying, I believe. It's the little fountain when you first walked in before, before you, you got to Spaceship before Earth. Before you got on the spaceship. That's okay. completely gone. As far as I know, the big fountain in the back, that one's still That's the part. place where it would make the most sense because you figure from there you get to see. Mm-hmm. The vast majority of the mm -hmm. rest of the park, though. That's where I would have put it. But. Yeah, well, that I think that's going to be part of Dreamer's Point. <clears throat> so, okay. um, so they have that whole area. So then two of the, the new sections, one is World Nature, and that's basically dedicated to the understanding and preserving the beauty and awe and balance of the natural world. And this is where... The land pavilion, the side where the land pavilion is, and the seas with Nemo and friends. So those are still staying there. Um, but what they're doing is bringing a Moana uh, attraction. So it's Journey of Water, which is going to be inspired by Moana. It's the first uh, experience... Uh, inspired by the Moana movie. Uh, it'll have lush trails where you can go and explore and play with magical living water. Um, and you'll find out that water has its its life of its own. Um, the Land Pavilion will actually be getting a new movie called Awesome Planet, which will showcase the beauty... Awesome. <laughs> diversity and dy dynamic story of the planet and that'll actually debut in 2020 that takes over where um the pollution movie was the simba uh and timon and pumbaa movie that was upstairs I that think I, ever I don't think that. we ever went to it and then when it closed it was just kind of this this empty spot right um so that's the world nature spot then the world discovery spot which is on the other side um it'll be stories about science technology and intergalactic adventure and that's obviously where test track is where mission space is and where the new guardians of the galaxy cosmic rewind ride will be um, so the adventure for the Ga Guardians of the Galaxy basically starts in a planetarium-like exhibit, and you explore the similarities and mysteries of the Earth's galaxies and Xandar, and you're invited to learn more about uh, the treasures of, that Xandar has to share until the moment when the Guardians of the Galaxy arrives, and then the adventure crosses the cosmos you know, ensues. Um, and that is the uh, um, the ride for that. It's actually going to be a 360 degree roller coaster where you're going to end up going in all sorts oh, of directions. There was a chance I was going to go on it before. <laughs> now there's really no chance. I was yeah, go I don't on even it. know if our daughter will go on it. You know, we'll have to see how many years it, it takes her uh, to go. So that you know is underway um and then they are actually doing an expansion of mission the mission space pavilion to actually include a new restaurant called space 2020 uh, uh 220 uh it'll be a culinary experience featuring the celestial panorama of a space station um including daytime and nighttime views of earth from 220 miles up uh, you'll board a special elevator for a journey in t uh, to the space station that is home to an incredible dining experience. So, sounds like a, a very cool dining. Yeah, uh, I know when they cool. were talking about it, they were thinking it was going to be a Star Wars restaurant. There were rumors about that, but it's basically just a s 
a space theme to go with uh, mission, mission Space. Um, and then the last area that they have is the Play Pavilion, which will open in time for the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World. And it's basically a big, giant indoor play area um, for kids. Um, they'll be able to have interactive... It's basically an interactive uh, city with games and activities and experiences um, with Disney characters there. Um, it basically... Uh, it's also a chance to help legendary fashion icon Edna Mole on her quest to rid the rule rid the world of uninspired style or you can have a water balloon fight with Huey, Dewey, Louie and Webby so sounds like uh, you know a nice area for the younger kids to go and play and it's indoors so you'll be able to to kind of cool off you know and and rest you know a little bit um so they're actually opening up, uh, so if anybody, you know, who's ever been to Epcot, one of the little side areas is the Odyssey Pavilion. And they kind of only use that now really during the special event uh, um uh, events that they have. That's usually the only time that they are they have it open, but they're actually going to be opening it October 1st of this year to kind of present all of the things that are going to be changing at Epcot. It's kind of like a preview center. So okay. if you happen to be down there um, after October 1st and you're interested, go over to the Odyssey and they'll have you know all this and probably much more there for you to, to take a look about. So That's cool. Well, I have to say, it makes more sense uh, you know, when they had announced the Guardians of the Galaxy ride right. for Epcot, it made no sense that you would put it there. Right. Because um, without changing everything else, right. it was there was like, no why context are you putting for it, it there. It made no right. sense that right. you would put it there. Mm-hmm. Now, with this coming out now, it makes a lot more sense how they're dividing up, you know, the side of the park that was, you know, dedicated to the rides and stuff like that. Right, right. And now, you know... That's the, it makes sense. Right. It's the spacey, futuristic, right. technology side of things. And then you have your nature side of things. And So yeah, now so it, it, it kind of fits that they're going to leverage that property for it. Mm-hmm. And it, and it'll, you know, from, from what we've read, it looks like it will fit in fairly well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I'm sure, again, with the whole um, Avengers campuses, there'll be something there. You know, buy that ride, I'm sure. Again, that outpost type thing to kind of tie in that it's connected with all the other Avengers, you know, areas. So Cool. A lot of changes coming to Epcot. Yeah, definitely. So let's move on. So this was one that I was anxiously awaiting the news of and was... Utterly disappointed when the news actually came out of it. So why don't you tell us about this one? So there were lots of rumors about the Star Wars Hotel and what it was going to to be like. Um, And a lot of people were like, oh, it's immersive. You can only stay so many days. You know, again, not much information. Uh, You know, it basically sounded like if you were going there... That was going to be the only thing you were going to want to do. You weren't going to want to go to the park because, you know, it was going to be a a 24-7 immersive, you know, experience. Um, So they um, brought this out, obviously, during D23. Um, So they said that it's a Star Wars vacation experience unlike anything Disney has ever created before with a fully immersive um, for, sorry, with fully immersive guests in a galaxy far, far away when Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser debuts at the Walt Disney World Resort in Florida. Um, and basically, it's going to be like a two-day cruise. Is A pretend cruise. A pretend cruise. Um, so... The Galactic Star Cruiser will offer a two-night itinerary where all guests arrive and depart together, similar to the Disney Cruise Line. Unlike any typical cruise, though, you can become the heroes of your own Star Wars story with a new type of immersive experience that only Disney can create. You will cruise the galaxy in style aboard the Halcyon, known for its 
uh, impeccable service and exotic destinations. On board, you'll stay in a well-appointed cabin, experience onboard dining, make a planet-side excursion to Black Spire uh, Outpost on Batu, and much more. Throughout the journey, you'll be invited to delve deeper into your personal adventure by participating in onboard activities, interacting with characters, crews, and other passengers you meet, and becoming part of the action of the broader Star Wars saga. So, basically, your adventure is going to begin as soon as you get to the Galactic Star Cruiser Terminal at Walt Disney World. Um, so, some people were saying that if you happen to fly into... Orlando International Airport, there will be a special pickup area for people going to the Galactic uh, Star Cruiser. Obviously, if you're driving or arriving elsewhere, there'll be a special place where you'll go. And that once you uh, there, get there, you'll be checked in for your two-night experience. You will uh, be invited to enter the launch pod for transportation into space. And through the windows, you'll be able to see that you're leaving the real world, real world behind and entering space. <laughs> and you'll be able to jump to hyperspeed um, as you grow, you know, get closer to, to the ship. Um, when you dock, the airlocks will open and you'll be able to sh step onto the uh, main deck and your journey will begin. Um, uh, basically, your visit becomes kind of a multi-day story that interweaves with members of the crew and other passengers, familiar Star Wars characters, and excursions to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at Hollywood Studios. So that is... Now, they don't say whether or not it's a separate ticket that you need for it, you know, or is it part of your package? So, obviously... Um, and, and that's all going to depend on pricing, obviously. I'm sure it is. So, the all-immersive experience also features entertaining activities, such as lightsaber wielding, um, visiting the bridge to learn about the ship's system. Also, every window... Uh, in the cabins has a space view um, and all of the windows on the ship have have different space views uh, you'll be ex uh, you'll be able to explore and discover hidden spaces uh, deep in the mechanics of the ship um, you know perfect for uncovering secrets and, and holding secret meetings so as you explore the ship there'll be different places for you to to sneak in and, and go from here to there and and elsewhere so it sounds really cool um, some of the speculation uh, was that you're talking about like $3,300 per person um that it's going to be priced kind of like a cruise you and, know? and obviously that's where my number one concern right. comes from they're simulating a cruise experience not providing a cruise experience <laughs> right. right and since it's really a hotel why is there a per person charge right right there's there shouldn't be a per person is charge it, it should be a per for the two charge. nights that I'm there, is it all you can eat, unlimited, all inclusive, like a cruise would be? Yeah, I don't know. So this is where you know my concern is, is that right. if you look at the numbers, and if the right. numbers are what people are saying, right, then Disney is basically charging you twice as much per night for a fake cruise than they right. do for a real cruise. And maybe it'll be one of those things where depending on the size of your room that, you know, like a, a regular cruise, if you get a, a small cabin you're paying less than somebody that's doing a, a larger cabin that, that fits. And what know. amenities are you <clears throat> passing up here? Right, exactly. Obviously Is I there... can't go sit on my balcony if I'm on a starship, right? Right, because you would die. Right. Because you, you know, you're not in your, your space. Right. Is there a pool? <laughs> Is there an right, indoor exactly. pool to go you to? You would think they would have some sort of indoor pool or, you know, or if there is some sort of outdoor thing, are you kind of closed off, you know, like, oh, you're you're going outside, but it's really the hollow, you know, a holodeck, right. even though that that's Star and, Trek. And what are they um, giving me to justify the cost of it? Because that's really, these days, that's what it all comes down mm -hmm, to. Is, yeah. 
no matter what you get from Disney, there is a cost associated mm-hmm. with it. Yeah. And the decision the consumer has to make is, is the cost worth the value that you're getting? Right. And more times than not these days, it simply isn't worth the cost. Right. And I think for that Star Wars fan, that, you know, person that's always looking to do something different out of the norm, you know... This well, might and be... that's typically me. Right. The problem that I have is the Star Wars that they portray is right. their it's, version right. of it. Right. It's their version. They do it's everything not. they can to whitewash the traditional original trill, even the original six movies. Right. I'll say that were done by Lucas. Disney has gone out of their way to eliminate and and minimize any influence they have on what they think their vision of Star Wars is. And what you get is a whitewashed version of Disney's Star Wars that they want to jam down your throat, and now that they're finally doing something for all the fans out there, that's the version that you get. Mm. You know, I haven't been to Galaxy's Edge yet, but everything that I've read shows you might get hints here and there Mm -hmm. of, you know, the original trilogy, but... You know what? If Darth Vader isn't walking around at Galaxy's Edge, then it's not (laughs) Star Wars. I'm sorry. For you, yes. I understand. For for me and many other diehards. And and I've definitely seen that as well from my, you know, various different, you know, uh, Disney slash Star Wars friends who have either been there or, you know, they've had that same you know, argument is that, okay, where's Darth Vader? If he's not here, it's not Star Wars. But yet there's so much of the Star Wars galaxy out there. And you being somebody that's read many of the books and many of the comics and and canon and not canon and this and that, you know, that's... Right. What I think what bothers me the most is that by participating in what they're offering... I almost feel like I'm contributing to the problem that is Ryan Johnson Star Wars. That's what I feel. I don't want to. I don't want to play a part in, in his version of Star Wars. You know what? I need to start a drinking game because <laughs> this is like the third podcast in a row where you've managed to to bring him up. Yeah, so he well, he he's the Elsa. I am holding out hope that J.J. Abrams can save the franchise. Uh, I think he will. I. I think he will. So, okay, so we have one more uh, uh, topic to one talk more. to when oh, we come gosh. back. So, Disney Plus. Yes. We, we learned a lot about Disney Plus. Tell us what we've learned about Disney Plus. Yeah, so we, we already knew a bunch of different things about Disney Plus, but obviously during the expo, a lot more came out. Um, So they went through a a big list of things, and you know, again, they want to make sure that that Disney Plus is, you know, something for everybody, really. Um, So they had the cast of High School Musical, the musical, the series, open up the panel. Um, So if you have kids that are of that age that were into High School Musical, uh, the movie, now they're actually coming out with a series about it. Uh, So that was, you know, nice to see that they're, you know, again, this is all of the original stuff that they're going to be uh, showing. Um, One of the other things, too, was that they said that they did confirm that the entire Pixar catalog all Disney Channel series and original movies, basically everything from the Disney vault would be brought out for the launch of uh, Disney+. Plus. Um, then uh, they're doing a reboot of Lizzie McGuire with Hilary Duff coming back as, as the lead. So, you know, fans of Lizzie McGuire get to see... You know, the the older version, get to see her, you know, with kids, I'm sure, um, now being the mom as, you know, opposed to the, you know, the teenage kid. Um, The one show that I saw that, like, totally spoke to me was Kristen Bell is going to be hosting a reality show 
entitled Encore, where she will be reuniting old high school theater troops to perform their big shows one more time together as adults. Um, If you haven't seen the trailer for it, uh, if you were ever involved in drama club or chorus or or anything um, like that in, in high school, give a look uh, at it because it really does kind of tug on your heartstrings if you were ever a, a performer in high school. Um, and just to see, you know, the these adults come together, you know, 15, 20 years after, you know, they did their show and, and to see where they are in life, you know, and, and, you know, some people actually did go on to have a performing career and, and some, you know, that was the last time they ever, uh, did anything and to, and to see them come back, you know, really, uh, really is, you know, it got me all choked up. So I, it's, you know, being a fan of Glee, this was kind of like, you know, the adult version of, you know, what happens after uh, graduation. Um, then they are also coming out with The World According to Jeff Goldblum, where he'll explore everything from ice cream to tattoos to sneakers. And that'll actually be part of um uh the um national geographic part of disney plus uh so that's a new show then obviously we've seen um various different things about lady and the tramp um so they had previews of the movie for for lady and the tramp uh where it's live action obviously there is some computer animation uh when the dogs are talking um but otherwise they they are real dogs because there were stories that came out um that the dog that plays tramp was actually adopted from from a pound so that was kind of a oh that's kind of a cute little story um so if you're a fan of the original uh movie uh animated this was really cute i did see the trailer for that um then obviously they're gonna have uh, a holiday movie come out with anna kendrick and bill Hader called noel so they had a, a trailer for for that um and then what was really cool was uh they had been talking about the animated uh marvel series called if what if what if yeah and they basically got almost every MCU uh, actor to voice over their character for it. So one of the cool things was that Peggy Carter would be uh, doing her part, and the one episode is where we see Peggy Carter as Captain America. Nice. So that... that And they were able to bring Haley Atwell back to play yep, Peggy. Yep, they nice. sure did. So that was really cool. Um, and then also in MCU uh, circles... They found out that another familiar face would be joining the Falcon and Winter Soldier um, show, and that'll be Emily Van Camp, who is returning as Peggy's niece, Shannon. Sharon. 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 Uh, So that'll be, you know, so she's coming, you know, so she'll be part of uh, that series. Also, they gave a, a sneak peek to WandaVision, um, what that show will Which be really, like. Which really, I still say, it sounds like, like some 1960s B-movie version of 3D. Right, right. And that's obviously with Wanda and Vision and kind of their love story. Right. You know, everything that happened. Um, and then, not that they really gave much information about it, but they said, hey, here are three new series that are going to be joining the MCU on Disney+, Plus, and that's Miss Marvel... Moon Knight and She Hulk. Nice. So, pretty cool, you know. And again, you know, a lot of stuff people kind of knew about but speculated. So, it was obviously very cool. Also, one of the other things, uh, Kathleen Kennedy, the president of Lucas Films, did confirm that the entire Star Wars collection, including Star Wars uh, The Rise of Skywalker, within a year of it being released, would also be on you know disney plus as well all the more reason for him to keep raising the price of it <laughs> i'm waiting for him I, I suspect they'll raise the price before it even launches well they, they already, already started packaging they already did it. because they started the packages right. so right you know so yeah it'll be interesting to see how long you know if by january 2020 you know everything kind of 
you know. Right. It, it'll be interesting to see, you know, because I know, uh, I, I believe people that were at D23 were going to be getting some sort of preview to it and could log on to it, you know, now or, or there was something that was going to be available. Right. Um, so it'll be interesting to see, you know, if they do anything, you know, if you're a DVC member or, you know, a D23 member or something. I doubt it. I doubt it because they, they, be... they never throw love to the people that are recurring revenue to them. Yeah, I know. Um, which for a company is just silly. Yeah, I I know. Um, and then obviously they had the the trailer for the Mandalorian, and they did confirm the Obi Wan uh, series as well, which right. everybody kind of knew. But here the confirmation came out. So again, a lot of good stuff. Um, so people are are getting really excited about you know Disney Plus. It's really sounding like it's going to be uh, a good station, a good, you know, app, I guess, because it's not a station. Cause, time, yeah. time will tell. Time will tell. So let's uh, come back. I have one more segment I want to do that it wasn't originally in the show notes. Okay. So I wanted to real quick uh, – pay quick tribute to the Dig Disney legends who were honored yes. this year. Uh, you have the list in front of you there? Uh, I have part of it. All right. Let's go down the list. We'll just go down quickly. And oh, okay. there are some folks here who are obviously known, very right. well known. We don't have to go into the, de the detail. The folks who might be a little less known, like the, the first one on the list there mm -hmm. who's, you know, comes from uh, within the organization itself. Mm -hmm. So I'll let you run with the list. Sure. So this was actually uh, the Legends uh, Award actually kind of kicked off the expo. Um, and Disney didn't really do a lot of live streaming uh, of D23. They actually only did uh, two events a day were live streamed. So a lot of videos that might pop up uh, on YouTube or, or uh, personal, uh, you know, people's personal videos. Um, but this was one that that came up uh, in the after uh, early afternoon on on Friday, and I was actually watching uh, most of it, which was really kind of cool. Um, so here are the list of the 2019. Uh, Legends uh, Award honorees. So the first one was Wing Chow. Uh, and again, he's somebody that the name probably doesn't sound familiar, but he served as the vice chairman of Walt Disney Parks and Resorts for Asia Pacific Development, as well as executive vice president of Walt Disney Imagineering, where he oversaw master planning, design, and architecture as Disney Parks Worldwide. Um, and when they went through his little bio, you know, they showed his influence of, you know, the architecture from, yep. you know, resorts to parks to rides and everything. And he was a, a big part of it, you know, not only for the, the Asia Pacific parks, but as well as, you know, the U.S. parks as well. Yeah. Um, so it was really nice to, to it's, see that. It's, to me, it's considering all the other names on this list mm -hmm. here, it's nice to see people like that, even though you know, he's an executive at Disney. Right. He started out, you know, as one of those right. people who, you know, you could as much as I, I knock Bob Iger for, you know, taking credit for all the successes of the company, mm -hmm. but not being the guy in the trenches doing the work. Wing Chow was one of those guys who right. was in the trenches doing the right. work, mm -hmm. producing for the parks right. and making the park special and was able to work his way through the mm -hmm. system. He's an excellent example of what a Disney legend really should be. Right. And another park, you know, employee or, or executive would be uh, Barnett Ritchie. Um, and she started her career as a choreographer at Disneyland in the late 60s. She worked on the grand openings for Walt Disney World, Epcot, uh, Tokyo Disneyland and directed shows like the Golden Horseshoe Review at Disneyland um, and the Diamond Horseshoe Review at Walt Disney World. But her biggest creation was the um, choreography for Fantasmic. Um, and she actually retired from the company in 2013. Um, and when she came up, she was just... 
she was in awe because again it's somebody that you you know you don't know her by name if you're yeah. you know a, a, a regular guest but to see what her impact was um you know like she kind of had the idea to to do this show and how do we do this here and of course if you know if you've um, seen Fantasmic in, in Walt Disney World, it's a lot different than when you're in Disneyland because in Disneyland they didn't have a special arena for it. It was, you know, how do we do this massive show, you know, in this small, you know, right. area? So, you know, she was very humble, you know, to, to receive it's her. It's people like her that award. who mm -hmm. are the magic makers behind the scenes mm -hmm. that really make the difference. Yeah. Um, and not to say that the rest of the list, you know, aren't magic makers in their, their own way, um, but they're obviously more well-known uh, recipients. Uh, so obviously the, the first that came out was... Robert Downey Jr. He kind of stole the the show. Um, so two-time Academy Award nominee, Golden Globe winner, has appeared obviously in more than 80 films, but obviously what he's known for in the Disney world obviously is Tony Stark. Um, and he was kind of funny um, because he admitted that he actually got kicked out of the park in one of his first visits uh, to Disneyland because he was smoking pot. Uh, so and that's was, a good example for the kids. Yeah, exactly. It was like, don't do what I did and, you know... Look how much better my life is now so that I also associated with Robert Downey Jr. We had John Favreau as well. Yes, yeah, so it was kind of interesting how they kind of like certain people kind of went together. Uh, so obviously, uh, John Favreau, who is the director of Iron Man, Iron Man 2, he did the live action remake of Jungle Book and The Lion King. Um, he'll be, uh, he directed The Mandalorian for Disney Plus. So tons of, uh, you know, work with Disney and is very appreciative of Disney and really paid homage in, in his speech to the technology, you know, that they're always moving forward, um, you know, with it. Um, and to kind of tie in with The Lion King, obviously the voice. the voice James Earl Jones uh, was inducted uh, he wasn't able to be there but had a recorded uh, speech and again very humble to be you know part of the Disney family obviously not just the voice of Mufasa right but also the voice of Vader right and obviously you know Mufasa was how he came into the family and by proxy you well, know technically he did <laughs> Vader well before he did Mufasa. Right, but but Vader wasn't part of the Disney family at that Correct. point in time. So that's why I said by proxy, you know, he got grandfathered in. Huh? You know. Um, so then uh, from there we had Bette Midler, um, who obviously, you know, she's worked with Disney for years on various comedy uh, movies back when Touchstone uh, was, you know, kind of separated. Um, Beaches was a, a Disney movie um, and obviously is very well known for Hocus Pocus, which has now become a Halloween classic. Um, what was very touching was she wasn't able to, to make it there. She, I guess, was flying from New York and there had been really bad weather and she kept trying to, to get to you know LA and to Anaheim and just couldn't make it um, but her daughter I guess lives somewhere in the California area or was already there so she actually read um, the speech that was written oh, that by was Beth. Cool. very sweet and you know very emotional um, and it was just a very touching uh, moment uh, and then we had uh, Kenny Ortega, who is a director and choreographer who did Newsies and did Hocus Pocus and the High School Musical uh, movies, as well as The Descendants. Um, he was uh, awarded as well. Um, and then we had two news uh Anchors. Uh, we had Robin Roberts, who actually had started on ESPN in the 90s, um, and Diane Sawyer um, from ABC News. And both of their speeches were very, um, 
very complimentary, you know, to each other and, you know, thanking, you know, the Disney company for, for giving them, you know, such an opportunity. Um, and then kind of finishing out, we kind of had the, uh, the Mulan <laughs> group of, of, <laughs> of uh, actors and singers. So Christina Aguilera, who was one of the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse uh, stars, uh, as well as uh, sang uh, from uh, sang the the title song from Mulan, um, and then of course we had Mulan herself, uh, Ming Na Wei, uh, who not only did the voice of Mulan, but she also is on uh, Marvel's uh, Agents of Shield, um, and will also now be in The Mandalorian. And actually started her career in Joy Luck Club, which was a movie that Disney had produced. And to kind of uh, balance out, or not balance out. Uh, round it out. Round it out. Thank you. Uh, Hans Zimmer, uh, the famous uh, um, uh, musician. Uh, composer. Composer, thank musician, you. Musician, writer. Uh, who's done, you know, the Dark Knight trilogy, the Lion King, Iron Man, Pirates of the Caribbean, and also the newer version of the Lion King, uh, composed that as well. Um, so a good group of people. And it was interesting to see again from all different spectrums, you know, of, of, uh, of the entertainment world. All right. So that was a lot of what happened. It was not everything that happened, nope. but that was most of the highlights. Yep. Um, feel free to take a look at the links in the show notes. And uh, I think that's it for this one. That sure is. All right. Thanks a lot. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Okay. Okay.